Hey Crossgates, this is Cam. I'm out at the prayer chapel. I'm sitting at the entrance to the labyrinth. And I just want to thank Bill Sloop for coming out here this past week and really cleaning up the prayer chapel, making it uh, presentable, making it um, accessible to anybody who wants to come out here and pray and meditate. So this past semester, we brought our youth out here and spent a little bit of time discussing prayer, talking about how Jesus taught us to pray and how we should pray. And before we came out here, to be honest, I didn't know what the prayer labyrinth was. I thought it was a strange looking maze built on concrete. So I did a little bit of research and um, got to share that with our youth that night. But what I learned is the labyrinth it kind of looks like a maze. But what's special about this maze is you know where it leads. And it leads to the center, which has a cross in it. And the labyrinth's a tool. Um, it's a tool for contemplative prayer and meditation. And it has an entrance. And that entrance is also the exit. So what you do is, once you enter the prayer labyrinth, um, it's a time for you to spend time with God, um, in prayer specifically. And if you have questions, if you are dealing with emotions, uncertainty, it is a great way to be still and to intentionally seek the Lord's face I come out here during times of peace, during times of joy, during times of frustration and uncertainty. And today I'm just out here enjoying the nature. It is a beautiful day. It's the kind of day where it's chilly outside, but you find a place in the sun and it's a perfect temperature with a nice breeze. Uh, but if you have the opportunity sometime this week to come out to the prayer chapel, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, bring your Bible, come spend some time with the Lord, socially distance, um, and stay, I believe it's six feet recommended apart from others. But if you have some time to come out here, um, I would highly encourage it. But with the prayer labyrinth, once you enter, you can walk through at whatever pace you would like, but you know that as you walk through the twists and turns that it's all leading you to the center, which is the cross. And it's literally time for you to talk with God. And when, once you reach that center, you can turn around and go back through the twists and turns and exit right where you entered. And for me, um, it, it kind of represents seeking the Lord's face. And once you reach that center, you go. Um, and I mean, you can relate it to go and make disciples, um, go and be still, have peace, um, go with knowing that although life has these twists and turns that Christ is with you, it can mean many different things. Uh, it's, it's a tool for you to connect with the Lord. So thank you once again to Bill Sleep for coming out here and making this a space for worship. Before I close, I have a Bible verse I'd like to share with you, and it's in, or it's a passage, part of a passage, in 2 Corinthians, and this is when, um, let's talk about uh, treasures being stored in jars of clay, and just talked about Christ's death and resurrection, and how that one day when we die, we will also have hope that we'll be resurrected with Christ. And it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 15 through 18, all this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, 
but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And this passage today just brought me hope, it brought me joy, and I hope it does the same for you. Um, for me specifically today, it was the, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Praise be to God for his, the mystery of grace, for the beauty in Christ's death and resurrection, for what he did on the cross, and that we can be renewed day by day, that we can be restored day by day um, in Christ, that though we are imperfect, though we are sinners, though we make mistakes, um, Christ came and died for us. And one day when we stand before God, um, he will see Christ in us. So I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have the opportunity to come out to the prayer chapel, I encourage for you to. Um, but wash those hands and socially distance. Peace.